this lesson we're going to move on to uh, um, a tune type that we've done before but uh, a tune that's maybe a small bit more challenging than what we've done already um, this uh, tune it's a very old tune um, uh, called Young Tom Innes and um, the, the key of this tune is in A minor so we're after uh, uh, going on to another um, uh, key so more more experience and uh, You'll be able to listen to more of the wide range of keys and the different sounds and the feelings that go with them as well. Um, so, um, Young Tom Innes, this is a tune that I learnt um, when I was about 15 or 16 years old um, uh, from an album that um, my parents bought me called um, um, In Knocknagree. Knocknagree is a place down on the Cork Kerry border. Um, and uh, it was a live recording of two musicians, Tony McMahon, who's an accordion player, and Noel Hill, um, uh, the, accord the concertina player, both from Clare here, and they recorded a, um, a live um, music session with, uh, with set dancers with them. And this is one of the tunes that they played on that album, and um, it's one of the albums and one that uh, I would actually uh, really recommend for people to listen to as well um, because it's one of the, uh, the albums that kind of got my interest in traditional Irish music going and uh, introduced me into um, new areas and new influences and um, avenues to listen to. So, Young Tom Innes, an old pipe and tune I think. So, I'm going to just uh, uh, play it for you and um, You'll be able to hear what it sounds like. So that's Young Tom Innes. As you can hear, it's kind of a, um, it's um, not as happy sounding as some of the other ones. It's a bit more sort of darkish and that's the sort of color that A minor as a key would give you as well. So it just goes to show you all these different keys are much more than just uh, a way of reading a tune. It's just the listening experience as well. And some of these things um, uh, and mixing all these tunes into sets uh, when you eventually get going will uh, uh, will be nice to listen to when you mix up all these nice tunes together and you have a lovely color and tapestry in a way so um that's the, the way we kind of try to approach music anyway something that's nice to play but actually nice to listen to as well hopefully so but what we're talking about at the moment learning wise this is a great tune and i learn and i uh, i this is a tune that I play all the time and it's a tune I teach all the time because there are so many things in here that we, um, that, uh, that we can learn from as well and practice and uh, so many things that we can uh, use in other tunes uh, as we go on. So, um, I'm going to try the first part this time and um, go uh, at it uh, uh, line by line. So, 
this tune being an A minor, the C is in this because it is a um, a minor key. The C is going to be a, a C natural as opposed to C sharp, which is on the outside row. So our C natural is um, our B button on the push, as we um, as we discovered before. So our first line. Fairly straightforward, I think. So we start on our first finger on A, uh, low A, B, C, so we're only using our first two fingers there with those anyway, but kind of switching as well as I normally do. So. the first line, the second line. So we were talking about before with using the, um, the E, the high E on the outside row, the duplicate E. This is the perfect place to use it and it actually uh, sweetens and smoothens out the tune um, in a big way here. So I'll show you and go into a bit more detail here. So we're going to be using that E as well. This is going to get a bit of getting used to now, but it is very much worth it when, um, when, you, when you do get used to it, because you'll be using it everywhere. So we start the line uh, as, as we did in the first with our A, B, C, B, A, B. Now we're going to go up with our baby finger. And if you, Put your baby finger down without even thinking about it. Put it down on the nearest button. It's actually going to land perfectly on that E seven times. Well, depending on the size of your hand as well, but that's a different story. Um, but, uh, well, mine and most people anyway, when you put your finger down, it's actually going to land perfectly on that uh, F and E button. So it's going to be right there. So. Into D, then on the inside row. And notice those last four notes there were all on the out. So that's all to do with playing bass in the future, okay? But getting these things down and uh, nipped in the bud now is so important and, um, and cool as well because it makes your playing sound good. So we'll just try that again, all right? E on the outside row, D with your third finger on the inside, D, now another thing that I forgot to mention here as well that, that comes up when, um, when there are many of the same notes going in the same direction uh, in one way or the other, you can either allow the bellows to go out a bit too far and gain and lose control of them, or on the opposite way, when there's too many notes going in, the bellows will go in and you have no more air. So that can be a problem, but can be very easily um, uh, done as well. That's why we have the air button. So that's why I said to uh, on, on our first class in the beginners course, that our, um, our thumb should be resting here all the time, ready to go. And any time that we have, let's say, um, if we know that a tune is going to go somewhere uh, where there's a lot of notes going in the way and there's a potential that we might run out of air. So what I do is I think of what's the, the last note going out uh, before all those notes going in. Uh, are so I'd wait for that note and then give it a uh, give the bellows a pump which buys me a bit more time and a bit more space and the same and the same goes for going in the way as well 
and 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 out the way so that's something to bear in mind um if if there are tunes i think this might be one of them um there where we could um uh, explore that i'll um i'll um i'll explore it a bit more so it'll be um i'll let you know so that's the second line so we'll go on to the third line Similar to the first line. And on to the last line then. Now this is another place where we can use our E in the outside row as well. So what I do is I'd use um I'd use the E on the inside row for the first E and then use the E on the outside row um for the second E. So So that's the um, the the first part, the bones of the first part. In the next um, uh, in the next lesson, we're going to look um, into uh, into the ornamentation and what we can do to colour up that first half of Young Tom Menace. So join me then. <laughs>